What's up, Cowboys Nation? So how do y'all feel like the Cowboys' first day of free agency tampering went? How did it go? <laughs> Man, that, don't even ask the question. <laughs> it, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't worth asking. Yeah, man, and I'm not here so much to criticize what's going on. Uh, you can't really criticize something that you that you already know is going to happen. Uh, I've been telling you guys for weeks, and, you know, we already know what it is. They're not going to spend the money. Um, the only way that Dallas spends money, they really handle their budget as, as, as regular common folk handle their budget in the NFL. This is what they do. When they're getting ready to make a move, they trigger somebody's contract and they let everybody know that they're getting ready to make something happen. Right now, the Cowboys are $2 million over the cap, right? So you hear things like, we're going to spend within our means or we were going to make this deal happen. But, you know, looking at the talks, it's not within our means. Like, they're penny pinching, penny pinching, penny pinching. When they don't really have to do that. They really could just go out, make some deals happen. Or they could have over over the long haul, I mean, earlier, they could have made some deals happen, some extensions happen, and then they could have some money to go out here and, and do that. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do anything that's going to make them uncomfortable. You know, um, they have not done anything different to prove that they're a team that's trying to win the championship there's not anything that anybody out here who wants to defend these guys can convince me otherwise sure do, did they need to be a big spender on day one no they didn't but they're not in a position right now to even be a player or even you know for an agent or a player to really enter discussions with them they're not in the position right now cap wise from what you see and what you know um, to even be in serious talks. So no wonder none of these things or are, are, are all of these contracts are falling through. Now, this is one contract that I'll say where this is a player that I felt they, that this deal made a lot of sense. The Jacobs deal, where he signed a four-year, $48 million deal, $12.5 million guaranteed. That was a favorable contract right there for top-level production for the running back position. I felt like that was doable and, you know, I don't even think they pulled the trigger on it. I don't even think that there was even a call there. There have been a couple of prospects right now where, you know, they're looking at, you know, whether or not it fits within the means and it just hasn't worked. Um, and as long as they keep approaching it like that, uh, it's going to be very, very quiet. So I do have a few prospects that I think they might look at based on their track history. And it's funny. I know it's funny. I know we're laughing, right? I know it's hee-hee-ha-ha, -ha, but this is what Dallas does. This is a Dallas free agent special right now, and I'm giving you a class, 101. The person coming off of injury, right? They like the people coming off injury who feel like they have to prove something to everybody else and will take a prove-it deal. They like the ex-first-round players, you know what I'm saying, who were on their boards, you know, who have something to prove because they didn't have as much success somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? They like guys that are versatile, you know, uh, you know, maybe a special teamer that can, you know, fill in a role at linebacker or something like that. You know, I'm just thinking off the top of the head. But everything is predicated on budget, not production. You know what I'm saying? They look at budget first, production second. You know what I'm saying? And don't, I mean, um, Jake Ferguson put it up there. You know, I'm saying a privilege to be a Dallas Cowboy. And that's how they're approaching free agency, you know, as if it's a privilege to talk to them. And, you know, as it stands, we are worse than where we left it last year. We, we lost a couple of guys. We lost Dorrance Armstrong. We lost Tyler Biotish. Um, obviously, Tyron Smith is gone. Um, right now, I think that they feel like because of the draft, it's, a, it's it's addition by subtraction. And they'll add a couple of more pieces or whatnot. But in reality, 
we don't have that many picks, and that's missing a fourth round pick. I don't care how they sway it and try and tell you that Trey Lance is the fourth round pick this year. We need that fourth round pick. We need it. You know what I'm saying? Now they'll look at it, and next year they'll have a whole bunch of comp picks for the guys that that we're losing this year. But still, you know, we are shorthanded right now. Dallas is shorthanded, and it really appears that this team is on the track of rebuilding. You know what I'm saying? Because of how they how they how they're settled right now, how it looks right now, it looks like they might be ready to eat that fifty nine million dollars from Dak Prescott. You know what I'm saying? Because they have not even been talking to his agent from what we hear, from, from what reporters have been giving us that information. So until they touch that deal, and if they decide not to touch that deal, I can't help but believe that, you know, they're ready to blow this thing up after the end of the year. They'll have a lot of picks next year. Um, you know, they they can get Dak's contract off the books once they get that big chunk of money out of the way. And they'll have a, a brand new head coach. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section, man. Um, I'm not surprised, but we just have to be able to put the, the smart guy lens on right now and realize that this is what Dallas has always done. They're doing what they've always done. Um, now, people look at it and say, well, the NFC East got better. You know, the Eagles got Saquon. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're making deals happen. Washington's going and getting our old players that fit in with with Quinn and those guys over there. So, you know, that's okay, you know. But as long as the Dallas Cowboys keep trying to build their roster to be the NFC East champions, we're going to continue to either get bounced in the first round or eventually we won't make the playoffs. And um, right now with the first place schedule, I don't see the urgency, you know, and – is that concerning? Yeah, it's concerning, but at the end of the day, what can we do about it? You know, we just got to sit back and, and see what happens and then react to that news, you know. Um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity costs, missing out on some guys that are very, very productive. But at the end of the day, it's what we've always done. So there's no point of, of, of getting highly emotional about it. Derrick Henry's going to go to somebody else. He's probably going to go to Baltimore, you know. Um, uh, Aaron Jones is probably going to go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Um, actually, I think I just saw a report that he signed with the Vikings or he's going to sign with the Vikings. So we guys, we, we just have to know what it is, know what, what our environment is, know that we have a losing culture and I hate to say be okay with it, but just recognize that nothing's going to change. Appreciate y'all, man. I'm out. Peace.